treatments for patchulus. So in your patchulus patients, once you've decided, you know, solidified that diagnosis, what is your treatment algorithm for that set of patients? Um, you know, what, what does that look like? Well, again, it starts with looking for the etiology. Uh, if it's weight loss, we don't have them gain weight. That usually goes wherever else you don't want. <laughs> but uh, if there are other things that are treatable, if they're on diuretics, uh, they're on uh, particularly um, oral contraceptive with uh, spironolactone. Other oral, oral contraceptives are okay, but that particular combination seems to be prone. Caffeine, dehydration, allergic disease. Uh, if they're over-medicating on, on uh, antihistamines and nasal sprays, we'll convert them to nasal rinses and nasal chrome. Uh, immunotherapy when possible. So trying to control all of these other factors, temporal mandibular disorders, muscle, uh, muscular uh, treatments, relaxation therapy, etc. So we try all those things. If those don't work, uh, we resort to topical drops, saline drops, hypertonic saline drops for something more irritating. Four teaspoons of salt in a cup of water will give you a nice hypertonic solution that's cheap. You have to ex instruct the patients how to do it. So you've got a lysupine, Hang your head 15 degrees, apply the drops, and turn 45 degrees toward the floor. So it's kind of like a not as severe a head hanging hall pike position. And the drops, when they touch the station tube, will give a, a twinge that radiates to the ear. If they don't get the twinge, they missed. So I, you have to carefully coach them in all of those things. Hypertonic, they can do as often as they like. If none of this works, my go to is the patchul end. Patchul end, you can get over the internet. It's ascorbic acid solution, it, vitamin C in a bottle. It really stings a lot of the people. Some people say it's uh, too, too powerful for them. But uh, if they do that, three drops, two to three times a day for two straight months to try to get a lasting benefit really can work in a lot of the patients. So that's, that, those are the uh, go-to things. If they've failed the hypertonic, or the patch will end with a rigid protocol like that. Those are the ones I'm considering surgery if we have to. And real quick, what's, what's your, you know, the most common surgical option for these patients? Yeah, the most common thing I do is to, that we don't have any commercial device. So off-label, inserting an angiocatheter catheter that are filled with molten bone wax, let it harden, cut it to size, and put it up the full length of the eustachian tube. And if they're out of town, I even put a stitch to it. We get great results with that. I can't do that if they've got a dehiscent carotid artery. So you know, for those patients, we have to do cartilage implants. So I'm actually making an incision in the walls of the, car of the uh, eustachian tube and packing cartilage uh, pieces into the side walls to bulk it up. I've done that once. It's very challenging. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I hope you have the instrument. that far in the nose. Yeah, we, we, had, we had them order the special kind of eustachian tube, uh, like needle driver, you know, instruments to get to the back of the nose. But that is, it is very challenging um, throwing stitches in that part of the nose. So the, putting in a, the, the shim is much, much preferred, much easier. Right. And you're talking about a shim. So we, we call it a shim. It's a plumber's shim to help try to plug the leak of the valve without intentionally plugging it completely. So we do call it a shim. 